Without question, it can be said that Egyptian pharaoh Cleopatra's rise to power was a true testament of one's keen ability to lead an empire in the ancient world. For a young woman to be cast out of Egypt by her brother and marked for death, only to return victorious, leading an army of mercenaries, while also gaining the favor of Roman general Julius Caesar, says it all. She was a natural-born leader, and one that certainly had a way with people. While Cleopatra's rise to power is a remarkable tale about determination and female empowerment, that sadly was not enough to save her from a grim fate that ultimately ended her reign, but also marked her as the last pharaoh in Egyptian history. Before we start the video, I just want to go over a couple points. First and foremost, if you have not seen the previous Cleopatra video that I put out about her rise to power, pause this video and go check that one out first, as this is essentially a sequel to that video. That video is titled The Last Pharaoh, and you can find the link in the description box below. Secondly, when it comes to dates, I use BCE, which simply means Before Common Era. It's basically the exact same system as BC but subtracts Christ from the equation altogether. Considering not everyone is Christian, this is the more universal system that is commonly used in academia today. Thirdly, Cleopatra is an extremely complex character in history, and one that has a massive amount of information that surrounds her life. Therefore, to make things more straightforward, I had to cut a few sections of her life out of this video. That said, if you have any questions about Cleopatra, please feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Finally, many of the pictures used in this video are from all over the place. Everything from art to movies to video games are featured here. And with all that said and done, please enjoy the video. If we're going to talk about Cleopatra's death, we have to talk about the events prior to it. So the things that led up to it. Essentially, Cleopatra's death was a domino effect, where it was a chain reaction of events that happened one after the other. The first, and probably one of the more major events in her life, was the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BCE. By this point in time, both Caesar and Cleopatra were fully involved with one another, as it is believed that the two were married or possibly seeing each other. What is known about this relationship is that Cleopatra gave birth to Caesar's son, Caesarion, in 47 BCE. Needless to say, both the Roman Empire and Egyptian Kingdom were fully intertwined by this point. But, returning to Caesar's assassination now, on March 15, 44 BCE, the Roman Senate called a meeting shortly after Caesar had declared himself a dictator of Rome. This self-declaration did not bode well for the Romans as they feared Caesar would eventually declare himself king, so they conspired to kill him. During the middle of the meeting, Caesar was assaulted by a group of senators and repeatedly stabbed 23 times. To Caesar's horror, he found out that the assassination was led by many he called friends, the most notable being Marcus Brutus. Both Cleopatra and Caesarion were in Rome at this time, so, to ensure their own survival, they quickly fled back to Egypt. Skip ahead a few years now, after Caesar's death, and it's now 41 BCE. Since his death, the entire Roman Empire has been in a constant state of turmoil and panic. The Roman Republic has been split in two. The two sides being those who sided with Caesar before he died, and those who opposed him. In an attempt for help, Rome calls on Egypt to assist in the fight against the Separatists, which were led by Brutus, who killed Caesar. 
After some time of fighting, the attack proved to be a success, and Brutus was defeated. Afterwards, Roman General Mark Antony requested Cleopatra's presence in Tarsus, which is now modern-day Turkey, to discuss the aftermath of the battle. Cleopatra agreed to this and set sail for Tarsus. It took some time, but eventually Cleopatra arrived in Tarsus to meet with Antony. To say her arrival was spectacular would be an understatement, as it's said that she arrived in an elaborate ship and dressed as the Egyptian goddess Isis, which is a goddess she often associated herself with. Of course, to no one's surprise, Antony was seduced by Cleopatra, and so began one of history's most problematic yet notable love stories, as this affair proved to be the catalyst of Cleopatra's downfall. Following her meeting with Antony, Cleopatra returned to Egypt, and Antony arrived there shortly after her. Upon doing this, Antony actually left his wife, Fulvia, and their children behind. What makes matters even worse is that shortly after Antony left, Fulvia dies, and the children are left as orphans. Within a short time of being together, both Cleopatra and Antony have two children, the first being a male named Alexander Helios, and the second being a female, Cleopatra Selene. Helios meaning sun, and Selene meaning moon. However, while this may sound like everything was going well for these two, one thing held them back from being married. Antony could not marry Cleopatra because he still needed to prove his loyalty to Octavian, who was currently ruling Rome. As a result of this, Antony was forced to leave Cleopatra and marry Octavian's half-sister, Octavia. Yet, despite being married to Octavia now, Antony was still in love with Cleopatra. Skip ahead a few years now, and it's now 36 BCE. Antony returns to Egypt, and while he is there, he has another child with Cleopatra named Ptolemy Philadelphus. Despite being married to Octavia, Antony was determined to be with Cleopatra. As the old saying goes, the heart wants what it wants, and clearly, Antony wanted Cleopatra. Of course, due to the circumstances, Antony's marriage to Octavia could not last. So, in 34 BCE, he left her. This did not go over well with Octavia's half-brother, Octavian, who was furious. Octavian was so mad at this that he actually declared war on Egypt, but more importantly, declared war on Cleopatra. And so begins the domino effect that ultimately leads to Cleopatra's downfall. The war between Rome and Egypt lasts about three years, and by 31 BCE, Octavian and his forces have defeated the Egyptians. The final battle that ultimately sealed Egypt's fate was known as the Battle of Actium, which was a huge event in history. Not only did this victory ensure Egypt's defeat, it also ended the Roman Civil War, which began when Caesar was killed 13 years prior in 44 BCE. Even though Rome had defeated Egypt, Octavian still had some loose ends to tie up, that being his rival, Antony, and Egypt's pharaoh, Cleopatra. However, those loose ends actually ended up tying themselves up instead. During the midst of all the battle and chaos, Antony heard a rumor that Cleopatra had been killed. So, in a typical Romeo and Juliet fashion, he decided to kill himself through the means of his own sword. Sadly, just upon his final moments, he learned that the rumor was false and that Cleopatra still lived. He then dies. The heartbroken Cleopatra then proceeds to bury Antony somewhere in Egypt. A year later, in 30 BCE, Octavian arrives in Alexandria to deal with Cleopatra once and for all. To avoid public humiliation and possible execution, Cleopatra proceeded to lock herself in her own personal chambers in the royal palace 
and like Antony before, decides to take her own life. Unfortunately, Cleopatra did not have a long life, as she was only 39 years old when she died. How exactly Cleopatra died is still a mystery, but what is known is that she died through the means of poison. How exactly this happened is unknown, but there are numerous theories that debate this topic. The most well-known theory regarding her death states that she killed herself by using a poisonous snake, specifically an asp. But there's no solid evidence to support this theory, as many believe it's just romanticized. Another more solid theory claims that Cleopatra may have injected herself with poison, most likely by use of a needle. The theory claims that because of Cleopatra's vast knowledge of chemistry, that she knew exactly what she was doing, and how much poison was needed for a lethal injection. Considering the fact that Cleopatra's body has never been found, it's impossible to determine how she really died for sure. Upon her request, Cleopatra was buried with Antony. Despite being enemies, Octavian still respected the Egyptian pharaoh, which is why she was given a royal burial. The exact location of Antony and Cleopatra's tomb is still unknown to this day, but one can only hope that it's still out there, waiting to be discovered. Cleopatra's life may have been short-lived compared to some of Egypt's other rulers, but her legacy has lived on for over 2,000 years after her death. She's become one of history's most iconic figures and one of the most powerful females in existence, which, in turn, makes her my personal favorite character in history. All right, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please check out the other Cleopatra video on her rise to power. And if you want, hit that subscribe button as it really helps the channel grow. On behalf of the CBU Historical Society, my name is Avery, and I'll see you next time.